this over here is welcoming hostel urban design. Wait, what? Yes, exactly. Well, these nice green fields over here are actually part of a park in Brussels and it's really this open space is very refreshing for the dense urban environment. And to be honest, this place over here is heavily used, not right now, by many of the citizens and to be fair, used by different kind of ethnicities and social groups. They're playing volleyball over here, football, soccer, uh, they're running their dogs, they're having picnics, they're laying down and everything seems fine. So then why is this hostile? Well, let's try like this. This space over here is predominantly intended to be used as a seating infrastructure. And let's say like this. I'm a person, a citizen of Brussels, who live in the surrounding area, maybe in one of those buildings over there. And very often it happens that inside the typical Brussels uh, house, you live inside a small apartment, which is very narrow and dark. And to be honest, that's what I can afford. And public space is very important for me. And I really can have opportunity to use this nice, beautiful space over here. But as you can see in Brussels, very often rays even in the summer, like right now it's uh, June, and you will come out here and you walk around and you say like, oof, it was very rainy. I will go down and sit and you say, hmm, but the grass is wet, right? And you say like, okay, no problem. I'm gonna go look for a bench to sit somewhere. You walk, you walk, and you keep walking and there is no bench. Okay, never mind. Maybe this was a very particular kind of scenario. Let's try it like this. I am a person who chronically suffers from back pain and I'm in the late 50s. Uh, going and kneeling down, to be honest, is really kind of a problem. And very often when I have to take a walk with my partner, I have to take very often uh, rest stops to stop a little bit, to take a pause and a little bit uh, cool down and uh, give some break to my bones But you know what you end up walking 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 in this vast area of field over here and there is no bench Okay, maybe this was again too particular case. Let's write like this. I am a construction worker or a truck driver You know a typical working-class person and I have a very bad knees from working and of course during the weekend uh, i want to come here and to enjoy some great quality time with my family and i would uh, like to sit on the grass no problem and i can sit on the grass but getting up it's problematic i'm looking for a bench and there is no bench you see what i'm talking about here but again you might say well you're really cherry picking the scenarios okay i'll give you another very common scenario I'm a woman that just had her baby and uh, I'm breastfeeding, you know, and I'm walking down here and you know breastfeeding, I don't know if you know, but it's not just like you, yeah, the, the baby is hungry and just like you start feeding, you have to kind of get the momentum, the context, the baby has to be a little bit cooled down and very often a sitting position is kind of the best kind of to, to set up the baby for feeding. And then you walk around here, you were like strolling with the stroller, very nice, everything was perfect. And then out of nowhere, you see that the baby is hungry, you have to breastfeed the baby and you're looking for a bench and there is no bench. Well, you can see where we're going with this, right? Even if you want to say we're kind of cherry picking the cases, there is so many scenarios from so many different types of groups to whom this kind of great green infrastructure is actually not welcoming. Well, now as you can see, they're actually working on updating the quality of this park, which was a little bit in a bad shape. And they're investing around 6 million euros to update the sitting infrastructure, the user experience for all the citizens over here. And as we said before, there is no traces that benches will be installed. However, though, we think, we assume that this widening of the road over here is intending for installing potentially a bench, a sitting bench. Well, you know what? Benches shouldn't be concentrated in one spot 
and you don't have to go and look for them. For example, I'm not sure how big this park over here is, but it's for sure around kilometer across, maybe more, I'm not sure, maybe half. And really, if this is the only place where you can find a sitting bench, you have to really kind of spend a lot of walking around this park in order to find a sitting bench. My point is, you shouldn't be looking for a sitting bench. Benches should be sporadically placed all around the space so that you just bump into them, find them on your own way. By the way, find a bench. They should be identifiable item that invites you all of a sudden in the public space. Now, as we're walking in this park over here, maybe it's evident to say that this kind of a path over here, it's an infrastructural um, line that cuts the park on half and offers a great kind of shortcut, a promenade from that side of the city, from the park to the other one. So you can imagine that a different kind of social groups would largely and broadly use this uh, walking infrastructure over here in order to make a shortcut and get better connection with the rest of the city. And then you come to the end of this park where this beautiful long axis ends like this with staircase. And this staircase has been just built maybe three or four months ago uh, with the works of the new renovation project. So now you can see, for example, again, let's say you're pushing a stroller and you want to uh, cut uh, from that side of the park, from that neighborhood over here. And you come with the stroller and your baby here. How are you gonna get on the other side? How? You have to go on the other side from there or from there and you're actually being uh, manipulated to kind of abandon this spot and to say, you, you know what, I'm never using this place over here uh, again because it's like a trap. It offers this great axis for walking and connection to the city and you end up hitting the stairs. So obviously the stairs are inviting for young, energetic, athletic people who can maybe just go and climb the stairs and so on. So again, this is very hostile, even though there is very nice green uh, elements all around. And while we're talking about not installing ramps and <laughs> installing stairs, then we have this very, very steep ramp that of course follow the contours of the landscape over here, of the topography, but honestly, it is very dangerous for different groups of people. For example, you know what? Ask one grandma to come over here and to use this path downwards. It will seem to them like they're looking from a mountain top down. I mean, it's super dangerous. Yes, they're updating the park and we know that's a great thing, but it's not just pave all the roads with the same kind of material and we're done, we're through. This is a very smooth material in rainy days, in snowy days, or when there is a frost, it can be super dangerous and it should have been considered. This thing, it's hostile, guys, hostile. So you see this path over here, on one hand, it takes you towards the major axis of the park and the other road cuts through, uh, it takes a shortcut towards a bus station. And then you have to kind of deal with this uh, heavily inclined uh, walking path. I mean, this is, this is not a joke for many people. So many people would see this smooth uh, paving over here, uh, no stairs as an option, uh, no any kind of uh, uh, creative ramp solution, and they will just decide to go around the park. And yes, the outskirts of the park are lit up with these street lights. But then what about this uh, very important shortcuts that take you to different important places? Like, as we said, this ramp that takes you to the bus stop. Uh, there is no street light over here. How are you gonna walk here nighttime or when it's dark? Maybe you have to carry a battery with you all the time. This, this is this this is hostile, you know, hidden, welcoming hostility. But anyways, you may say like, ah, you're kind of asking too much. Fine, no problem, I agree. Uh, you see, oh, this over here is kind of a pergola, like a covered space. 
and I don't exactly know what is the purpose of it but however it gets me thinking of the following this park over here which is in Brussels and it rains a lot as we said before uh, why it's intended only to be used when it's sunny aren't we not supposed to use the public green spaces open space of the city while it's raining for example so in this whole park over here there is no a single structure that can offer a shelter for kind of hide yourself while the weather is shitty and still to be outside wait a second i really want to be reading a book outside isn't that just like adding the urban quality in the city and there is none over here uh, at the same time very often what happens here i know everyone checks the weather channel but you just come sporadically in the public uh, space over here and sometimes can be tricky like the weather is lying to you you want to go out it will be raining it's not going to be raining but it really happens all of a sudden rain and you're sitting here in the in the park and starts raining and there's literally no place where you can go and hide yourself and shelter from the rain you're like uh, being uh, chased out from the park in other words the park is symbolically all the time mentally giving you a sign over here I'm not that comfortable to be used over here yes I'm green and nice and this kind of green space in your head whenever you live here it rings a bell only when it's a nice weather when it's shitty like we're meant to avoid it while you're avoiding it all the edges around the park are becoming more dangerous and under less influence from the social control which is hostile right now if we can kind of confirm that this park invites you only during the sunny days means that whenever it's not sunny or uh, not uh, a weekend day uh, this park is not that heavily used in the center of it and means that it's kind of empty uh, with that being said uh, that space during the night hours especially in winter when here the dark hours the night starts around 4 p.m that's a very dangerous place for moving and you're kind of pushed to use the fringes of the of the park which is this sidewalk that surrounds the park on the other hand as you're walking on this uh, side of the park on that side we have this uh, single family villas or houses with big front yards as buffer zones which tells you that they're not very interested into being engaged into the public life and in that kind of way you create street which is very dangerous because on one side you have this dark park and on the other side you have uh, socially not engaged houses and then you being left on your own over here without any kind of social control to walk and uh, see if you're not gonna have emotional disorder of course because parks are an urban anomaly with the big quality for the city uh, there are a lot of bus stops around the parks and there are sitting benches around this park actually yeah how the hell you're supposed to be sitting here yeah i know it's a, this is you know 101 hostel urban design metal very bad especially for women especially for women but very bad for old people as well not inviting you to sit over here you're just like meant to be sitting five minutes over here take the bus and go away there is no other thing to do and you see like you know the the the, the hostility of this beautiful green park is just being layered on top of each other there's like multiple hostile urban design uh, properties and characteristics so with that being said we would like to wrap up this uh, episode with one of our reflection sketches as always as you can see on our reflection sketch we have uh, sketched a big green field with spikes on it uh, what is the point over here the point is that hostel urban design doesn't have to be with spikes or needles or with different kind of uncomfortable uh, metal bars and uninviting infrastructure in order to make to be hostile uh, as we are showing on this sketch over here the grass itself functions as needles for someone it's a great place to be playing around for others 
are needles. And that different perception to public spaces creates social gaps and misunderstandings between people. And uh, we want to say that hostile urban design can be also achieved by not doing anything and by not improving properly the existing uh, public spaces that we have. So I know that they're doing a lot of new work over here and things should be constructed step by step. Uh, but, uh, you know, things should be improved by accessibility and inclusivity first not by uh, makeup and great job they're working so far we're not trying to bash them but you know we're here to indicate the problems and as we saw there are many problems here so what about your city uh, do you have any invisible or welcoming and inviting host of design write down in the uh, comment section hope that you liked it and stay tuned to stripping architecture till the next episode when we're gonna strip the visible architecture and uncover the hidden mysteries of the urban environment.